Um, I'd like to thank, uh, start by thanking um, AHEAD, the organization, and also the people from LINK um, for allowing me to come here. Uh, living life on the edge, it feels like. Um, right, so I'm going to talk about how we try to make use of the tool that we've now got. And uh, I have to start, also start with an apology, because I think I might be getting your hopes up. Uh, showing you this picture, but um, no, I'm not going to start singing Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall. So this is another kind of wall, one that, th uh, one that face thousands of students every day. And um, my work is the work of a disability coordinator, and I've been working as such for about two and a half years now at a university in the south of Sweden. And prior to that, I, I worked at, do you call it sixth form colleges? Uh, so I taught uh, 16 to 19 year olds and then I worked a few years as a special needs teacher. But anyway, um, I'm so happy to be in, in this world now and I learn things every day and, um, and um, sorry, um, I have to ask you a question. Um, <clears throat> how many of you have seen the film or one of the films about Harry Potter or read the book Harry Potter? Hands up. Okay nearly all of you. Uh, for those of you who haven't, thank you, for those of you who haven't seen Harry Potter or read any of the books, Harry Potter is a young boy who's accepted to the school of wizardry. And he has to go to this school, it's a boarding school, and before he can go he has to get potion bottles and magic wands, and he has to get spell books, all kinds of things, but he doesn't know where to get them. But then, luckily, there's a big giant called Hagrid, and Hagrid goes up takes her with him, goes up to a brick wall and knocks three times on this brick wall. And all of a sudden the bricks start moving and behind the bricks an, a secret alleyway open up with shops and stores with, with all the things that Harry needs to be able to, to go to school. And um, this is where Universal Design comes in. And um, we don't have a magic wand exactly, but Universal Design is more or less like a magic wand according to me. And uh, I first heard about Universal Design two years ago here in Dublin uh, when Joan Maguire gave the keynote speech about uh, Universal Design in Education and whether that was uh, any of our business. As it turned out, it is. And um, what I like about Universal Design is that uh, nobody uh, needs to wait and see if they are invited in, because even in, in the name Universal Design, students are already included. Sometimes it feels like when you use the word inclusion, that of course we have to use, and, and still use a lot, um, is that when you use inclusion, it feels like a few students are invited to join the rest of the students. That was my first thought when, when I was here in Dublin two years ago. Um, that, oh, well, Eureka, why haven't we thought about this before? Even uh, changing the name to Universal Design. Um, so Universal Design to all of us is of course a tool to bring down walls uh, which today might hinder some of our students. And the principles of Universal Design are like tools, like these screwdrivers on, on the picture in, in front of us. And um, and um, the thing I was worried about before I started working or trying to implement or spreading the idea of universal design was whether I knew enough about universal design and, and who, who was I to being new at university and, and I barely knew about universal design. But then I, well, I started using, I started using questions. And I also... Um, I also found out that there's, this, there's nothing to worry about if you don't feel that you... We can't just sit and, and wait for, um, uh, for ourselves to give us permission to see whether we know enough or not, because you don't really have to, to have more than the right attitude, I think. In Sweden, we have, a, we have about 9 million inhabitants. I think it's about 9 million. And out of these 9 million, last academic year, 2013 to 2014, there were about 406,000 students 
who studied at university. And out of those 206,000 students, there were less than 3% who got uh, support uh, because of disability. That is, who, who got to meet me or Crystal or Kina in Luleå, for example, less than 3%. So either this can mean that we are exceptionally good at, at accessibility and universal design already in Sweden, and um, I think that in some areas we are quite good, uh, especially when it comes to talking books, for example. Uh, you don't have to have a, a medical assessment for a doc from a doctor to, to get... Um, to get talking books. You can just go to a librarian at your local university and say that you have a reading impairment. Can you say that? Uh, you nod, thank you. Um, so that's all you have to do to make it plausible that you have a reading impairment and then, voila, you have all, all the books you need um, and they produ <coughs> produce new books for you as well. But uh, anyway, we, we talk about less than 3% 3, 3 that visit me or my colleagues. So probably it means that we have still a lot of students to try to reach. Sometimes it feels like this, that, that I meet a couple of students. Well, at my university, uh, I think we have about 180 students. We have 4,000 students, but 180 who, who now get some sort of support because of disabilities. Um, and I'm trying to, to talk to the communication department to see how we can, if I can use them uh, to try to get the word out, that there's more help to, to get um, to. Get to. Uh, then, of course, there are the, the hidden number of students who have disabilities but don't have a medical assessment. And that's an even bigger problem. How on earth do we uh, reach them? Um, I've tried to, um, to talk with the counselors, if you call them that, the student counselors and, and other people to see whether we can form a, a discussion group to, and, and see if students who are uh, very nervous about uh, giving presentations, for example, uh, can, can have other ways of um, giving, pres well, um, being examined, or, or they can have, uh, do examinations with, the, that everyone can do examinations with computers and things like that, and with spelling programs. So um, one teacher was opposed to that, because this would mean a lot of extra work for the teachers. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't uh, rebute that. So I, I will come back to that later on this spring, because um, I think we, there are things we can do. But when it comes to universal design, I think that uh, the idea that we can try to use all students, that every student stand to gain from universal design's principles, that might be an incentive for teachers to do even more than they already do today when it comes to making teaching accessible. And, um, and uh, the question, when I was here two years ago, was never if I would try to spread the word to, you know, about universal design to teachers at my university where I work, um, to those if there were teachers who didn't know about universal design. The question was never if, but rather how. I would do this. And then, of course, I've, um, I've used the, the words of my colleague down at the University of Lund, Christel Bay, who sits here on the second row. And I, quite a lot of people at my university now uh, know about uh, Christel, of course, and Shetil, I've told him that too. Mm -hmm. And uh, Christel quite often says that our job as, a disability, co as disability coordinators is not to, to start chasing ideas for the right diagnosis for, for a student to see which students would which student would get support or not. But our our job is to chase ideas. So that's what I've taken to heart. And um, I've tried to there it is. Uh, I've tried to look for ideas both of course for the individual student but also um, to look for ideas when it comes to implementing universal design out um, on campus to different bosses at the university and, and to different teachers. Um, and, and the thing, when I've talked about this, because I was a bit impulsive when I wrote the abstract for this speech, um, then I had to think about what I actually do. And I, I, it looks like I've been following three guidelines, and the guidelines are here. Uh, no to no questions, spread the risks and problems that matter matters. 
And um, when it comes to the first guideline, no to no questions, I think it's, it's, it's quite evident that I tried to ask questions where you can't give the answer no to me. So I, I go and, and ask the Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, I did that last June, for example, uh, I asked her whether she could be my sounding board for a project that I'm working on. And, and <clears throat> she, she said yes, and, and we had some discussion. I had told her earlier about universal design in various ways. And, um, and then when I once talked to, I was asked to go and talk to, what's it called, head of, the head of school for one, one section of, of the university. And he asked me to come and talk about disability and, and what we do as disability coordinators. Um, and then, of course, I asked him, well, would it be possible if I can use five minutes to talk about universal design? So I never, I try not to be a nuisance, but I never pass up any uh, opportunity to, to mention universal design. And I always try to do it through asking questions or inviting people to cooperate with me or asking them, as I said, to be my sounding boards. So, and it's been really a lot of fun and still is. And this may, may not look like fun. I do use the law, but I, rather gently. I don't go banging people on the head with, with the law. Uh, but um, I try to keep people up to date. Everyone is so busy with their own thing, of course. But I try to keep them up to date with what's going on nationally and, and internationally in, uh, in the debate. So I sort of, well, nudge a little bit here every now and then. And of course, uh, the law is, is the most brilliant tool of all, um, the law and universal design. And by not asking uh, no questions, of course, there are so many more roads to take. <clears throat> I couldn't go to just one boss and, and be nervous and ask, see whether I would be able to work with this or not. It's too important, universal design. So I have to, I can tell the vice chancellor later on that I've talked to the, what's his name, the head of the, the head of school, and he suggested this, and, and then, well, I do it like that. Um, so, so the roads, for me, go more or less like the ones on the picture here. And of course, I, I don't um, miss out on inviting the staff union or, um, or the student union, for that matter. Um, and another um, one of my guidelines is, of course, to spread the risks. That is what financial advisors tell us to do. So you see here on the picture uh, the stock exchange in New York. Uh, they say um, financial advisors are bankers, or you read about it in the papers anyway, uh, that we can't put all our shares in one company. Well, of course, when it comes to universal design, we can't put all our shares in, in one person or one project or one publication. So I, I spread the risks uh, through meeting different people, like I've already said. And, and then they start connecting, like, like uh, the, the lines here between the people you see on the picture. Um, and, and it does work. It, it's, thank you. It's ten, gone 10 minutes. I'd ask for that help. Uh, so that's one way of, of working. I, I, I was told that in university you have to be quiet about your ideas, otherwise some of the people will work, take that idea and work with it. But I. It's not my idea, and, and, and of course, my job as a disability coordinator is to spread the word, and, and I make sure that I have enough time. It's easy for me because I don't have that many individual students, but I try, anyway, to, to find time to work proactively for a more accessible uh, university. I, I tried to work with different projects. One of the first projects was that I was <clears throat> luckily invited to have a small part of the educational development course for teachers at our university. I was asked to talk about div diversity, among other things. And of course, that was just a few months after the conference here in Dublin two years ago. And I thought, well, can I really start to talk about universal design? But, but I, um, I did. So uh, this year, there will be, it will be the second time we have I will take part in the course educational development, and I'll talk a bit more about it later on. Uh, 
when I talked to the pro vice chancellor, she, she said no. Well, she didn't really say no, but she had another suggestion that I would work more with workshops. So now we're going to have more workshops, not only the one that I have in educational development courses, but also for other people, who, other teachers who don't uh, study one of these courses. Um, and uh, we have a publication that will uh, talk a little bit about um, universal design. And I have a bigger project in the pipeline, and I'll come back to that too. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. That's the project. And here on the left-hand side, you will see a green publication. It says debate, uh, educational development, more or less. And uh, come August or September, there will be an issue about accessibility at university and about universal design. Um, and uh, if any of you, I don't think you will be paid, but if any of you would like to contribute a page or a few pages, uh, please don't hesitate to come and talk to me. Um, so um, I'm quite happy about that. And the small print, if that's the word, uh, on the right is called Teach Accessibly. Uh, a guide for teachers uh, at universities to teach more accessibly. And, and, and I'm working with um, uh, the, un the student union and some teachers from the teachers union as well to, to anchor the things that I do. So we'll have a meeting next week, one, one of all the meetings. Um, the third guideline that I try to use is, of course, to find problems that matter. And all of these four problems that I've found, or that I try to use, are well known to all of us. And the first one, symbolized by this clock, is of course lack of time. Um, and Because that's what, one of the first things I heard at university. Teachers, are, they, they don't have enough time and, and everything is counted by hours and minutes nearly. So what better argument than uh, Saving time, like I remember Joe McGuire said here two years ago. Um, and of course, economy. Um, teachers uh, and, and bosses sort of, um, uh, of course, if, if we can uh, save money, and if we can use the money in a different way, maybe they will be um, more uh, prone to, to use this idea of universal design. Um, and uh, I think the word is throughput, or student completion. I tried to find a good picture for this, but the funnel is supposed to symbolize where you put a lot of students in and hopefully equal amount of students finish their degree. Um, and that's also a, a problem I've heard about retention, not enough students completing their studies. And that's, where also, um, that's also where universal design comes in as an answer. Of course, all these problems have universal design as their answer. Uh, the fourth and last um, problem is um, pedagogical discussions, the lack of pedagogical discussions. But of course, if you start talking about uh, how you can save time, how you can save uh, money, how you can make more students complete their studies through using universal design, well, all of a sudden you have, um, well, automatically pedagogical discussions. Uh, so th those were my three guidelines. Uh, if I go back to the course about educational development, uh, it's quite easy I, the way I try to do it. And since I was a bit nervous, as I said earlier, whether I knew enough about universal design, uh, the headline for this part of the course about um, accessibility and universal design um, was would universal design work as a tool to increase accessibility and also save time for teachers? That's a little uh, one of the arguments again. And I remember Joan McGuire, uh, she said that, that when she talked about the origin of universal design for instruction, she said that in the late 90s, uh, there was some sort of competition in America where they um, went to universities and asked them whether they could, um, asked them whether they could uh, use the principles of universal design in higher education to save time and, and save resources. So I put it as a question so that by doing that I, I dared to take it in, well, to use this, this angle of the course. Um, you see, the presentation we gave, the, a colleague and I gave uh, 
last year uh, went so quickly. So here on bullet point number two, you see even the letters didn't have time to stick here on the slide. So I'm sorry about that. Um, and the task when, when the, the um, participants of the course um, were told about universal design, they were also told, told to get to bring their curricula or syllabi to, well, uh, to try to scan to, uh, through their curricula to see what was possible to do when it comes to using the, the nine principles of universal design for instruction or the principles for universal design to, to make uh, studies even more accessible or teaching more accessible. And today, um, so far, uh, thanks to the conference you have he had here two years ago, um, universal design at, at the university where I work, we, we use it in educational development, we use it in workshops. We will have an issue about accessibility and universal design in our pub publication about educational development. There might be a prize about excellent teaching and accessible teaching. Um, it's discussed. Um, there are also a few more things. Teachers who took part last year in educational development, they said that they want more arenas to discuss ideas of how to work. So maybe there will be, um, how to work with universal design. So maybe there will be um, breakfast meetings or maybe we'll use social media, I don't know, we'll see. And um, uh, to finish here, uh, I'd like to, um, to show you uh, a picture that symbolizes the wall we saw in the beginning. But this is a c quite different wall. This is a wall behind the other wall because uh, universal design is a tool to bring down walls and instead show us um, a student body as one, a diverse one. And uh, sometimes um, when I, I get asked about my drive when it comes to disability questions or my drive when it comes to disability, I, I get a bit puzzled because I don't really recognize me and, and I never kn knew what to answer. But, but the simple answer is that, um, well, first of all, universal design is a tool to help us um, make universities, studies, um, plausible or, or possible for all students, and it's all a matter of human rights. So with that, I say thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you Pia. Um, is there any questions for Pia? We have five minutes. <laughs> Time for a lot of questions. Okay. Uh, my, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. My name is Peter Bernick. I'm from uh, Nagasaki University in Japan. And I'm just getting started with the idea of um, creating workshops or uh, training for faculty in the in the area of uh, universal design. Uh, at the same time, doing things rela related to reasonable accommodations. Um, it's kind of doing it in parallel. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of thinking about, I don't want to reinvent the wheel for the faculty workshops. And so I'm thinking about if you have any ideas about where to start in that. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> if, about the workshops? Mm -hmm. Um, well, what I do is, um, like, I get invited, oh, I forgot about the microphones, uh, I got excited, uh, well, um, I was, when I get invited out to different, what you call, institutions to talk with teachers, every time I, I talk about, like, I have to understand their world, and I'm an old teacher, not, not at university, but I'm, I'm a teacher anyway, so I know the trouble with time not being enough and things like that, so I think it's just, like, well, somebody said that we're all in sales now. Uh, I'm a language person, actually, but, um, but I, th I think that, that uh, people who are in sales do say, or oh, if you're looking for a new job, uh, I think they, don't they say that you have to look for the, the problem that are really difficult for the ones that you are trying to sell to? So, so when they realize 
not only that, that this, well, when they realize we, we make them look at their problems and that universal design is the answer. It looks like I'm a bit religious now, but I nearly <laughs> am when it comes to universal design. So, and, and also that I try to, I haven't met a no yet, not even when I'm out with teachers. And I think it's because I invite people, I don't come with it ready with the concept. I don't come with, okay, here you have the checklist, because Joe Maguire, she said, it's not as easy as a checklist, and it's not as difficult as rocket science, she said. I have a good memory for some things. So, so when you invite people in, and also I understand time. So one of the big projects that I was talking about was that, oh, I forgot to say that. The Pro Vice Chancellor, she came, into, she came by my room on Monday this week, and she said, by the way, I'm working on the strategic plan for our university, and we will have three objectives. One is digitalization, one is work placement. We all, all students are out in work placement. And the third one is universal design. So, so I'm, I'm so happy with that. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't know, but I, I, it's so self-evident with with, that this is something that all students are, are benefited from and uh, that you can't, um, if, you, if you say that they save time, you save time and resources and use the law a little bit and I just try to find the problems that matter and of course it is human rights but I think when we just talk about a small group of students sometimes people think well they are your students Pia sort of and well we have two of those now but uh, so it's just interesting. I'll, I'll have to keep a look out and see if we can learn from you. I'm sure we can. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Actually, we have the room for one more question. Anyone? Uh, thank you, um, Pia. Very well you. presentation. I'm, I loved it. Um, what, what do you, well, it's, uh, my name is Jet Knoll. I'm from Universal in uh, in Norway, National Coordinator for Universal Design and Higher Education. Um, you said something very important here in the end, which we have learned as well, is that we, if you present to uh, academic staff a whole concept of Universal Design, they will just won't be interested. I, I tried that once uh, when I was uh, at, um, having a speech for uh, university pedagogical courses and I presented a whole idea of universal design and they were so afraid. And they asked the question in the end, uh, can you tell me just one thing I have to do? And you have to flip the side of that coin because if you present a total concept, mm. no one will listen. But where to start is actually the most interesting question and that will differ from group to group uh, according to who you actually meet. But, uh, more of a remark than a question, but uh, I think you're doing the right stuff. Thank you. Was there a question where to start now? Yeah, I, I think we have to stop now. Okay. But Pia, you will be around the rest of the day and tomorrow. Yes. Yep. So, so you can ask questions then too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pia. Thank you.